All works. Contact. That's a manual? It is. Is that easy? No, I like it. I like, you like it. 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 It gives you something to do. It gives you something to think about. Okay. I'm a lorry driver today. That's what I do, isn't it? So I drive the truck. It doesn't drive me. I thought lorry drivers today liked automatic gearboxes. Yeah, well, are they lazy? Or is that... Uh, we're going to have an argument again. <laughs> when I started driving automatics for a week, my leg went wrong. Really? I didn't like it. I didn't like doing nothing. What can you say? I'm in control, I'm in charge, that's what I want to do. I don't want it doing it for me, do I? I don't want it changing down when it wants and changing up when it wants. It can't see the hill that's coming or the traffic flow, can it? Right. So is it always right? The answer is no. But I think now a manual box is more money than an automatic. Is it? Yeah. Wow. But if you're doing off-road stuff, as some of my friends do, you don't want an automatic because they get stuck too easy. Yeah, if you go yeah. in the fields loading turf, yeah. a lot of gyms works building sites, mm -hmm. you don't want an automatic box. And you don't in the snow, they're awful. Because you can't control it, can you? Right. Basically, it wants, all it wants to do is go and you want to slow it down. But this is a three gate box. Which means? Well, I'm used to a four-speed box, right. in a, as in a four-gate box, like that little FL10 is an right. eight-speed with right. four with four on top. But this is a three-gate, so I've only got three. I've only got three positions. Yeah, but it's got a range change and a splitter. Right. So it's a bit confusing. They're all a bit confusing because they're all different, aren't they? Yeah. But every maker makes their own. Basically. Yeah. yeah. But, but every every lorry. It's a bit different to another. They, even, that's, that fascinates me. But the serial numbers that come off the production line on the same day, they're the same, but they're not. They right. have their own little right. quirks that you get used to. How they pull, where they like the weight on the trailer. That's a bit peculiar, but it's a fact. Some trucks pull better with the weight in the middle. Some like it spread out. That's the hedge on the left. We've got to go around that corner. Right. But I can't. If I'm inside this, it's all right at the moment. There's nothing here, is it? No, quite. But as we get closer, I'm going to be in the hedge if I'm on my side of the road. Right. So this is the hedge we're talking about yeah. just here. Isn't I it? spoke yeah. to the man again. He said, "Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be there." Yeah. Now I see what you mean. Yeah. So I am actually over the line. Yeah. Obstructing this person coming this way, isn't it? And that's all my fault right. because he doesn't like me because he thinks I'm a pig. But on the other hand, you haven't got much choice. Well, I like that mirror. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. And my paint, you listen to him. And that, that is a big problem all around the back roads, shall yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Either. It's another road and a highway maintenance issue, isn't yeah, it, really? I know for a fact that the council own the first three feet. Yeah. So, see, but then you have an argument, whose responsibility is it then, if it's hanging over that three feet? Come on. Who's responsible? But I know the answer, it's the landowner. But they don't know who owns it. And the landowner won't want to do it anyway. Well, they've got to spend money to do it. Yeah. But that's not, that isn't the issue, is it? We're off on a driver's day. It's the first driver's day we've done for ages and ages, in fact about a year. And uh, we're off with a man called Simon Wasp, who I think a lot of people know. We're going to London, we're going down the other side of the Thames, going through hopefully uh, on the Woolwich Ferry, which will be fun. Haven't done that for yonks. And uh, we'll see how the day goes from there. One of the things that we wanted to have a run to London for was to see what it's like for the average trucker. We've got a full-size articulated vehicle, 
no problems. We've got a load of about, we guess, we're guessing about 20 to 22 tonnes. Um, so it's not extremely lively, but it's comfortable and we're having a nice ride. And uh, we'll see how it goes once we get in the smoke. How bad is it in London for the average driver? I don't know. You can tell us. We look forward to hearing from you on Tracking TV. One of the things that does get a lot of drivers is time deliveries because you get a delivery time, then you get there and then you wait for four hours. Well, it is a problem and it is frustrating because the answer, particularly when the weather's bad or you're stuck in an accident or you have that on the dock or you're trying to miss the boat, it's endless why you're not on time. And I don't like being late. I know people pull my leg all the time because I'm not, I'm not a very good timekeeper. I try, particularly when I've got a class, because it's important when I'm going to meet someone, there's a job interview, isn't it? If you're yeah. late, it's yeah. not a very indication of you as a person, is it? But I've got so I can't worry about it because it makes you ill and it spoils the whole day. And when you do get there on time, they'll mess you about and keep you in the yard two hours because they're not ready. But when you're late, they make a big issue about it. And so you've missed your booking time. Oh, I don't think you're going to get tipped today. Uh, well, I'll book you in at four o'clock. You sit there all day, so you miss your second delivery, you miss your reload, you miss the boat, and the whole day is a shambles. And you're not relaxed, enjoying that time, are you? Because you've got to get on. It's not like you can just sit back and watch a film and read a book, go for a walk. You think, well, I'm not going to get my second off, and so on. One of the things that gets to me is, is that, in fact, customers talk about time deliveries and stuff, but it's customers that delay you yes. and thereby make uh, well, some time delivery is impossible some, sometimes. Sometimes yeah. is the answer, but they don't think about where you're going next. And if I, I hate multi-drop work, I won't do it. Now I've done it, I won't do it. I'm always scared about taking the wrong stuff to the wrong place yeah. or leaving stuff that I should have got the first delivery in the tray and then you've got to go back with it. And I've had boxes of bolts and things that aren't even in amongst the load. It's so easy to forget about that and yeah. then there's a problem because you haven't done your job properly, have you? I want one address, one load. That's what we've got here, isn't it? Yep. That's what we're going to do. When we've done that, we can move on to the next step. Because I'm not interested in the next step. All that matters now is this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I've done this, we can do something else. That's no good giving me a list of jobs for a week. This is what you're doing. Monday you're doing this in the morning, Tuesday you're doing this, uh, Wednesday you're doing this, Thursday you're doing that. How do I know? If the lorry blows up on Monday, forget about Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but most planners can't do the job. They plan the job, and then when you can't do it, they've got the hump because they've got to rethink and alter it. Well, that's what you do. That's your job, isn't it? If you can't deal with the change, yeah. why are you sat there? Don't shout at me. Does it make it better? We'll be back soon with part two of Simon's Driver's Day. If you are in Eastern England and would like to take part, get in touch on Facebook, by email or on the phone.